Praise be Jesus Christ and welcome in another episode of the Fide Show on Fide TV. For the very first time on this channel, uh, this episode will be in English, obviously. Um, so, alors, euh, juste pour nos amis français, for our French friends, ne vous inquiétez pas, don't worry, euh, comme je vous l'avais annoncé, cette émission sera en anglais. Et euh, donc voilà, c'est une grande première pour nous, mais ne vous en faites pas, à la fin de l'émission, je reprendrai euh, en français pour répondre à vos questions et éventuellement voilà, discuter un petit peu pendant 20 minutes. Très bien, that being said, um, on this very special occasion, we have the great pleasure and honor to have with us uh, tonight 
or rather uh, this morning, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> yes, Dr. Peter Roynowski. Uh, good morning, Professor, and how are good you? Good morning. How are you? It's good to be with you. Yes. Much to speak of. Indeed. Um, uh, so thank you once again, Professor, for accepting uh, our invitation. Um, and now, uh, without any further ado, uh, and before I introduce uh, today's topic, I would like to salute and uh, thank Mr. Edwin Jung, or Mr. Edwin, uh, who made this uh, interview possible. So thank you once again. Uh, I also would like to thank the people who, who support Fide Catholica financially uh, and spiritually, and we could not do what we do without you guys. Thank you. So now, uh, today, today we will discuss the strange, very strange and tragic case of Sister Lucy of Fatima. And it is indeed, uh, and if I might say, uh, a, not only a case, but uh, indeed a, a criminal case. And that is why we will uh, present today, to, especially to our French audience, uh, the most unique and groundbreaking investigation uh, of that case that you, uh, Dr. Wojnowski, uh, initiated uh, about maybe two years ago. Is that right? Sure, yes. Two years ago, we established Sister Lucy Truth as an um, organization, as an educational corporation, and uh, we're pursuing that to this day. And uh, we've gotten people to support us uh, financially. We've gotten many experts who were willing to uh, produce reports for us. And um, so we're moving ahead. And hopefully very soon this summer we'll have international publicity. Um, you know, you bring our case to the French-speaking world, and we've had some success bringing it to the English-speaking world, but really no breakthrough on the mainstream media. Uh -huh. But um, we hope to do that very soon. So this tragic case, and you're absolutely right, it is a criminal case, and um, we, that we have to pursue as a matter of justice. I mean, everyone may read it in their own way theologically, but uh, there's a basic fact that Sister Lucy was somehow done away with in one way or another, and uh, her per persona was taken over and uh, used by another, an imposter, and uh, used by uh, the Vatican for its own end. So uh -huh. some we have to get to the bottom of this. Yes, and um, if I may, uh, uh, Professor, um, I will just... Uh, um, uh, tell uh, to our audience that, uh, uh, or rather display um, on the screen your website, sisterlucyimposter.org. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, so Sure. Yeah. Yes, great. It there, it's, uh, we have a separate, we have a website that uh, includes all the information that we have gotten so far, all the pictures that we're using, all the medical reports and um, facial analysis recognition that we've done, all the handwriting analysis that we've done, uh, forensic uh, evidence that we have, and the reports that we have. So it's all there online, hmm. and we're putting more up. Uh, this weekend, we should get a um, report by a maxiofacial surgeon who uh, has done a report and uh, that'll be uploaded soon. So it's all, it keeps coming in okay. and uh, the reports are really damning uh, because as you said, it is become a criminal case. Yes, it is when I, when I see um, the uh, scientific team, the experts that you, you gather together, it's, yes. uh, it's really astounding. And uh, Professor, be, before we dive into that, uh, sure. Uh, could you maybe please uh, introduce yourself uh, to our right. French audience who, who may know, know you? Um, uh, maybe <laughs> or they, they, they don't know you yet. So <laughs> <laughs> My name is uh, Peter Hoynowski, and I have a, um, a doctorate in philosophy. 
uh, from Fordham University in New York City. And uh, I intended to be an academic um, and uh, my during my life, but God has other plans. And after working in academia for a long time, uh, about 30 years, um, you know, and during that time, I was teaching and also um, giving a lot of lectures and uh, going around the world, um, giving lectures on various Catholic topics. I became involved with the Fatima Center and uh, Catholic Family News and would speak at their conferences. And um, within the last uh, two years, I um, have established the Sister Lucy Truth mm -hmm. uh, Corporation. And uh, basically... Uh, I was born on October 13th, 1965, okay. so um, it was uh, somehow the miracle of the sun has always been very important to me, and um, that, that the, the person who actually asked for the miracle of the sun and who was promised the miracle of the sun, something gravely unjust happened to her. Indeed. And we think around the year 1959. So um, this has to be dealt with and this has to be pursued. And uh, many, there's some who have tried to paper over this and act as if it doesn't exist, this whole problem. Many in the so-called traditionalist camp yeah. uh, want to act like this problem doesn't exist. Um, even though it's so evident now. and um, But it, we have to deal with it. It's the elephant in the room. How can we speak about Fatima and the third secret? And how can we, you know, even deal with what the history of Fatima is unless we, in some way, unless we get to the bottom of this whole problem of, the, of Sister Lucy and what happened to her? Yes, indeed. Um, so b before we we go f further, uh, I had another question because um, you being knowledgeable with the traditional Catholic movement for quite a long time, your testimony uh, can be of high value for young people like me, young Catholic like me. And sure. I, I recently heard a, a traditional Catholic nun from the West Coast telling how the devotion to Fatima in the late 60s was not as known and spread as it is now in the traditionalist movement. Uh, is that true? Or is, um, I don't know. I, I, um, I, I think that um, from what I know in tradition, you know, they've always had that devotion to Fatima, but it was fundamentally... There was a problem because it was much of it was based on the testimony and the statements of this false sister Lucy. Mm. So this talk of these diabolical disorientation, which is the product of the fraud, Sister Lucy, from 1969 or 1970. So, but there is increasing knowledge of Fatima. There's this. Uh, expectation and this renewed expectation that um, you know our lady we're sort of living the third secret now and uh, and um, so I, I don't know I don't know what to say about that also okay. in the Novus Ordo even amongst the modernists there's still some devotional relationship on the part of some to our lady of Fatima so and what happened at Fatima so hopefully we'll be able to through this investigation sort of open up the whole question of Fatima again for the world and uh, even for traditionalists to reevaluate what they've held about Fatima yeah. and uh, really get to the truth what is the truth what what did our lady actually say what did this what did sister Lucy really say uh and what is a product of an intentional deception yes and that's indeed. that's a big point that's a huge part of the fatima equation 
is that there was an intentional deception. And the question is, well, why? Why did they want to use Fatima? What For what purpose do they want to use Fatima? Hmm. And to tell you the truth, I think it's clear uh, they wanted to use it to give a seal of approval to the modernist revolution in the church. And that's exactly what the fake Sister Lucy did. From the time she appeared in 1967 uh, until, all the way up into her death in 2005. She endorsed the modernist revolution from the time of um, Paul VI all the way through John Paul II. Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, I I, um, I will have some question later as to why, uh, why or, or rather, what were actually the motivation of these uh, sure Vatican yep. II mobsters for for committing exactly. yes for committing such a heinous uh, heinous crime? So I, I know because that's what it seems. It's not just a matter of you know change. The modernist revolution wasn't just a matter of changing external details. It was a matter of changing the substance of the faith. Yes. And I think, I mean, it so perfectly mirrors uh, um, the changing of the, uh, you know, of Sister Lucy. I mean, her actual substance mm -hmm. was changed by <laughs> in putting, a, putting an imposter in her place who was, first of all, she looked different totally sure. and uh and our scientific evidence picks that up right away and uh but also her whole attitude towards everything was different including her attitude towards ecumenism her attitude towards the you know paul the sixth and uh john paul the second um I, I don't the real sister lucy would not would not have had the same attitude towards the abomination, uh, the abominations that have happened uh, in the, within the church and uh, within the Novus Ordo uh, during these decades. So yeah. um, it's something. It's something diabolical, really. Indeed, and I, I assume you are referring to the, especially to the nineteen ninety two uh, interview. Uh, sure. Uh, and we, yes. we, we will be addressing that uh, maybe later. Good, because I, I've, we're sort of looking into that now more and more, but uh, that, that's very fascinating. Mm. Yes. Um, and now, Professor, um, just to... I, I, would, I would like to ask you, how or rather when did you first start to, to raise doubts about the potential existence of that uh, fake Sister Lucy? Uh, uh, the first time I was even exposed to it, and listen, um, I was working with the Fatima Center, Father Gruner, at very close range since 2001. So I've been working with them for a long time, and yet the, even the idea of a fake Sister Lucy didn't arise. Uh, didn't I don't recall any question or any conversation in which this, the, the idea that there could be a fake even arose. So it was only the um, tradition and action website and the, the few couple articles by Marion Horvat uh, that sort of put me on to the whole thing. She actually put some photographs together and you could clearly see that there was a problem. And um, I started writing about it on my blog that there seemed to be a problem here, that th these women just didn't appear to be the same person. Um, but then a friend of mine who also worked at the Fatima Center, uh, Cornelia Ferreira, said, well, there, you know, there is there does some seem to be something here, but what you got to prove it. Hmm, it's not yes. proven. Prove it. So I said to myself, and okay, let's, let's prove it. And because now there's so many ways technologically and uh, scientifically of proving something like this. And so, but I wanted to get real experts who had no horse in the race, as we say, who didn't care one way or the other, didn't even know about the problem. 
are these 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 who are involved didn't even know there was a problem. Yes, in, indeed. And when uh, they find out there's a problem, they're sort of shocked. Uh, but because um, everyone thinks, well, Fatima is Fatima and Sister Lucy is Sister Lucy, and you know they've heard something about it. So, um, but when they actually look at the materials, they're they're shocked and they analyze it from their own scientific um, expertise. And uh, we get we got the top people in their profession who are known throughout the world. We have, for example, a forensic artist who has is in the Guinness Book of World Records for her for, uh, forensic art, identifying the most criminals. So something wow. like sixteen hundred uh, criminals were identified from her forensic work, and um, uh, she gave us two reports. Uh, one finding that it was indeed two different women and also one finding that the um, woman who appeared in 1967 with Paul VI is the same one that appeared with John Paul II from 1992 on, what, no, excuse me, from 1982 on when uh, they first met. So... Um, you know, get the best, get people who can actually make a judgment in all these different areas, whether it's forensic art, uh, the uh, facial recognition, we had the, we have the only, we have a report from the only American university that does, uh, facial recognition, uh, Michigan state university. They did a report for us and, um, they came out with this, this results that they're two separate people. Mm. And uh, so we wanted the best. We wanted those who would be objective. And these are the results that we get. And we, for about two years, report after report, some have, have been saying to us, these are not the same people and proving it to us that it's not, it's not, these are not the same women uh, the woman, uh, these two people are different people. And, um, and so we're basing our activity on that and we're trying to now publicize this information. At the same time, we're trying to get more information. Of course, now we have the dent, more dental reports coming in, uh, ophthalmologist report coming in, uh, we have uh, f maxillofacial surgeons report coming in, and uh, so, and also we're trying to break through to the major uh, media, the major networks. Right. So we're moving on a lot of different fronts, and um, you know, also linguistic analysis. One thing that we've done, we uh, got three Portuguese uh, linguists. And one attached to the uh, University of Coimbra in Portugal and asked them to analyze the interview of, well, it wasn't the interview, it was actually when Sister Lucy, but it was actually Sister Lucy too, um, went to Fatima and they, they taped it, they recorded it, uh, she spoke. So we asked them to analyze her language, not only to translate uh, what she said into English, but also to sort of indicate where her accent came from in order to try to locate where this imposter came from and finally, hopefully, to uh, find who she actually was. And we've basically, it's all on our website, basically we've, located even the town where this woman was from so wow. it's amazing once you start getting into yeah. the yeah. the evidence how much you can come up with and uh you know, the, the, this woman had nothing to, i mean i suppose she was a carmelite nun but i don't know i mean i suppose um father um i father hess Okay. Uh, said that uh, he pointed out that in the interview in 1992 that she seemed to be her habit didn't seem to fit properly at all. 
and um, and uh, and of course Carlos Evaristo, who interviewed Sister Lucy, uh, didn't believe that um, this was the real Sister Lucy. So oh, really? at the time, so he went to the police in Portugal oh. and asked what was going on. You know, did they have any? Uh, pictures of the old sister Lucy because he said this is not the same person wow. he just knew it wasn't the same person but then you know this Dr. Zagabi assured him uh, that it was the same person through looking at a few mm. pictures which was a joke and um, so that's where we are and, and, and uh, so this has been a huge cover-up. It's a yes, huge cover-up. It, it, it's it, a huge cover-up that I don't understand why more traditionalists, so-called, are uh, not standing up and say, "Wait a minute." Yes, this is this why, is, actually, this is really, sorry. This is actually really crazy uh, when you when one people goes to your website and see the. Uh, the, the scientific evidence, because bef before sure. and before and we had uh, mere assumptions, uh, sure. looking at the photographs and stuff. But now you you really have um, an exhaustive uh, and uh, scientific uh, sure file of proofs and evidence that this is really a criminal and, case. And this is crazy. We know mathematically that it's not the same person. I mean, it's a, it's we have mathematical certainty. Yes. I mean, they're, they've charted all the aspects of her face that don't change, and that and uh, and it shows beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is not the same person. And we have the statistics. I mean, those numbers don't lie. Uh -huh. So, what about this? What about this? And um, and it's sort of sinister now, even that um, this they're producing this movie about Fatima in uh, uh, well, it's supposed to be in April, released in April, but because of the to COVID nineteen crisis, uh, it's not going to be uh, released until August. Yes. August 14th and uh but again revival okay we're now everyone's going to be thinking about Fatima it's going to be on the big screen but it's a totally revamped Fatima message uh it's a it's a message of everyone getting together so that uh, all religions getting together people of all faiths in order to pray for peace some kind of temporal peace, okay. which is a total distortion of the message of Fatima. Yes, and uh, the fake the fake sister Lucy, if I remember well, uh, in the yes. 1992 uh, interviews, was um, constantly uh, insisting on uh, such uh, ecumenism, such uh, right. yeah, basically she uh, was uh, spreading the Vatican, the, the Vatican II uh, cool aid. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> drunk it herself long ago I, I I guess because uh well the most shocking thing and anyone who has who has the faith or any idea of what the faith is when they hear her say on the tape you know it's all translated nicely when they and we have it translated um, when she says that the the um, the conversion of Russia was not meant to be a conversion to the Catholic faith, but only to a liberal uh, system where you could choose any religion you wanted to freely. I mean, <laughs> you know that it, she's a big fraud and uh, it's a, she's spouting a huge lie. And uh, what are you going to say? That's... Yeah. She's, it's a fraud, and the message is a fraud, and the real Sister Lucy wouldn't even think about ever saying anything like that. Yeah, and uh, speaking of which, um, the what, what really um, amazed me uh, in that case is uh, the motivation uh, for this uh, substitution. And now, sure. uh, 
so now we can say that, uh, Professor, we, we are certain that there were at, at least at least one fake Sister Lucy, if not two, yeah. Who, yeah. who appeared publicly uh, under Paul the Fix. Yet, yeah. and yet, we do not know exactly uh, how and when the real uh, Sister Lucy disappeared or died. No, uh, we don't. Well, um, okay. no, we don't. No, we don't. And that's going to be part of the investigation in itself because we we can say that they're different people. The woman who appeared, uh, I mean, the real Sister Lucy who received the uh, apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima and the Sister Lucy that uh, appeared post or you know, in 1967 and after, um, we know that they're different people, but what happened to the real Sister Lucy, we don't know. Yeah. And once we've identified completely the fraud and uh, have absolute, with you know, medical certainty, hopefully through getting the DNA, um, then we'll move on to the next aspect which is what happened i mean we've sort of already moved on a bit because we've identified if not the exact city where the fraud came from but also but at least the region where her accent would put her uh, in portugal so and it's about a hundred miles away from um fatima the fatima area and if you know if you you know you're a european and you know that uh, accents are very important and even, you know, in yes. the United States before mass TV, we used to have very significant regional differences in, um, our accents and, um, right. you know that you can s sort of pinpoint exactly where someone is from by just listening to how they speak. Hmm. And, uh, so we're sort of on to. The, the, the fraud was uh, a city dweller. She grew up in a city. It, uh, she has an urban accent and uh, from northern Portugal. And um, so we're on to her already a bit. Okay. But uh, there's still much work to do. And so, but it's sort of exciting. Yes, this is um, frightening, but uh, absolutely uh, I know. Uh, yes, amazing as well. Because if they have the power, whoever these people are, if they have the power to do this to the the messenger of God and the messenger of Our Lady, well, what do they have to? What power do they have to deal yeah. with us? You know, Certainly, the yes. church. Yes, so, this, is, this is really, uh, really uh, frightening. And by the way, do you think that? Um, this substitution has uh, something to do with the third Fatima secret uh, not being revealed to the public in 1960. Well, right. I, well, it seems as if, if you look at the timeline, um, from what I hear, but, you know, this has to be substantiated completely. Sure. From what I hear, Sister Lucy, at the end of 1958, wanted to make world in the beginning of 1959 wow. and to speak to the world we don't know what she wants she wanted to get on the radio and speak to the world well of course that never happened and of course john the 23rd announced uh vatican the opening of vatican ii in on january 25th uh 1959 but, but um so, you know, that was her expectation, and the third secret was supposed to be revealed by 1960, and everyone in the world had that expectation that it would be. Well, it wasn't, and it, then in the summer of 1959, uh, it was said by the diocese, the local diocese of Leiria, I believe, uh, there was a statement put out that Sister Lucy has nothing more to say about Fatima. Mm, yeah. Well, of course, I mean, I don't think, well, that's why we, that's one of the reasons why we think she was already gone.
Yeah, and I, I, I also remember that uh, at that time, or around that time, because basically, basically Sister Lucy uh, disappeared after the death of uh, Pope Pius uh, the Twelfth. Yes, I think it's clear that she disappeared after the death of Pius the Twelfth. And I, I also remember that um, before beforehand, she had uh, for confessor she had uh, Father Frentes. And after that, um, she had another um, confessor. I don't remember the name, but well, yeah. he, uh, they did change. It, Father Fuentes was the one who uh, was the postulator for the cause of the uh, beatification of Francisco and Jacinta. So he was he had met with her, but but even her confessor was changed in uh, 1959. Okay. So, but that that is true that her I can't remember the confessor's name, but they his her confessor was changed. Even her doctor was changed. Wow, in 1959. Yeah. So we wouldn't be. Uh, but I mean, think about how strange this is. If if um, somebody sub, I mean, just think in your own family. If suddenly. Someone substituted you, <laughs> yeah, sure. and they kind of act as if there was nothing wrong. And you know, you're—I mean, how e weird and eerie the whole thing would be. And yet, this is what happened. Yeah. And uh, in the in the bosom of the church, so it's—I uh, don't know of a similar case, and uh, it's. It's very odd, that's for sure. Yeah, <clears throat> my guess is that uh, maybe the the, Vat the Vatican II mobsters had something to hide and uh, were pretty uncomfortable with uh, maybe maybe with the content of the third secret. So they had sure. to, <laughs> to basically. Oh yeah, get, uh, it, yeah, you're talking about third secret. Yes, because if it's about the great apostasy, which I believe it is. Yes. Um, it was a warning because Our Lady wouldn't have us just in this situation without telling us something. Mm. Um, then, of course, they wouldn't want it to come out. And that's why I think there's something sinister afoot. Because if she had just died, and why wouldn't they just let her be, you know, just say, yeah. well, she died. And, uh, because, and, you know, or they just sort of locked her up or something because mm. if she ever got word out that she was in captivity or that w a message as to what they were really up to or how she condemned the, the modernist revolution i mean that would shake the foundations of the uh, conciliar church and yes. that could never happen they would never allow that to happen so i'm convinced that they sort of snuffed her out yes uh but yes, indeed. you know that well, i leave that to the investigators hmm. um because they're that's their job to find out what happened and they have you know basically 30 years of experience doing just that so yes, because, um, because we, you have um private detectives on the private detectives uh who are working on the case yes wow. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say who they are yet. If we go forward with this, um, if, if it, you know, if the uh, networks go forward with this production, this movie documentary, well, then it'll be for all the public to see who, who we're dealing with and who we have. But um, for now, I'm keeping their names out of it for obvious reasons. Yeah, sure. I understand. Yeah, reasons. sure. And everyone other than me, uh, everyone else who's involved is unknown. <laughs> yeah, okay. Nameless, the yes. nameless ones, because, you know, they have their reputations and they have their, um, you know, their families and their health. And uh, so. No, it's, it's totally understandable. Uh, yeah. And, and by the way, I, um, I want to... Uh, to um, before and you you said that uh, in order to, in order to understand uh, this uh, very strange uh, substitution uh, the, the Vatican II uh, 
uh, architects, the Vatican II leaders, uh, not only made uh, Sister Lucy disappear, but they had to to create uh, an alter ego, uh, a false, yes, an uh, alter a fake ego. Sister Lucy. I, I, and, they and, took over her persona. So yes. even if we're not talking about the grave crime of murder, uh, even if even if we're not talking about that, we're talking about identity theft yes, on a indeed. grand scale, and uh, which is a crime in itself. And uh, so we're at least talking about some type of grave crime Absolutely. because um, they took over her identity and used it for their own ends to preach their new gospel. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, it's like they have a new gospel, so they have a new Sister Lucy. Because if you know anything about the old Sister Lucy, mm -hmm. and we just put up a video uh, that we just discovered of um, the 1946 visit of the real Sister Lucy to Fatima. It was her first time back since she left as a child in 1921. And if you look at that video and the pictures of that video, you realize what the old true Catholic religion is about, what the real Sister Lucy is about, because there's this gravitas, this profundity Absolutely, that you yes. don't see at all with the new Sister Lucy. I mean, she's, she's just sort of a happy-go-lucky simpleton in my mind. Yes, and um, actually... Uh, it's it's just as if they had to use uh, a substitute, a fake, uh, a communical yes. or a fake a modernist, uh, Sister Lucy, and that is why, um, uh, starting from uh, 1967, uh, we we, we yes. start to to see the fake Sister Lucy in public in public with uh, Paul yes. VI uh, yes. wandering around and um, oh also. That is another really strange thing because you uh, you uh, you published some really weird photos. So they they went as far as to edit photos with uh, yeah. the the fake Sister Lucy <laughs> and uh, Paul the Six. That? Yeah. But actually, it they are fake photos. So. And, and listen, that came out. Those pictures came out one month after, not even one month, like three weeks after the event on May 13th, 1967. Wow. So they, from the beginning, they were creating this fake. Uh, from the beginning, it wasn't just something thought of later. They, they put her in, in places where she was actually not. And, uh, and it looks, uh, you've looked at the pictures, it looks so artificial. It was Photoshop before Photoshop existed, so I just I just call it cut and paste. Basically, yes. <laughs> uh, you see Paul the Sixth there in front of all these crowds, uh, making these just hand gestures, and and then the, she's taped in yes. <laughs> right next to it <laughs> as if she's and 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 um, there's some ideological uh, or th and theological backing and background to all this because uh in below those pictures of paul the sixth right behind sister lucy it, it says that um i stand behind it was paul the sixth speaking i stand behind everything that she stands for that she says Yes, um, it's almost like uh, you know, um, back in the in in the uh, the Soviet Union, uh, yes. Stalin and uh, used to, <laughs> used to used to do uh, some uh, editing photos uh, like that. Yeah, who's standing near who would be yeah. the indication of how you stand in the you know the system and who's closer to power and. Who has a greater position? And uh, yes, that's that's the think about it. That's the first time they trotted out this woman uh, publicly. Uh, we think, and that they also tried trotted her out for, before celebrities, but it was probably behind the grill. Uh, I don't know if you ca caught the um, the thing I posted on my blog about Salvador Dali. Uh, oh, no, who, no I, did, I did not. No. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh, okay. 
Um, he, well, apparently the Blue Army in the United States, and I got to try to remember what I'm saying here. Um, the Blue Army in the United States asked Salvatore Dali to the painter, you know, the uh, oh. cubist and the uh, um, uh, surrealist, and uh, to um, paint a picture of the vision of hell. I mean, it's sort of odd to have him paint the picture of hell uh, since, you know, he was pretty much a communist and not sympathetic. Uh, But um, they wanted him to paint a picture of hell. So he couldn't quite, after reading the accounts, he couldn't quite envision what it was like. Like, what was the vision that Sister Lucy and the three children saw. So he wanted to visit Sister Lucy. This was in 1961, uh, after the time that we think she was gone. So in 1961, um, Salvador Dali asked the Vatican if he could go visit Sister Lucy and talk to her about her the vision of hell. And they said no. <laughs> I mean, this is a, you know, a famous painter and they should have said, oh, no problem. I mean, you can speak to her behind the grill. She'd be behind the grill. No problem. But they said no. Well, then when he came back, I, uh, I got to remember, I think one, a, bi- a, a priest or a bishop sort of finally arranged it, but it didn't happen until 1962. So, but in 1962, Salvador Dali supposedly met with uh, Sister Lucy, um, again, behind the grill, um, and asked her about the miracle, uh, excuse me, the uh, vision of hell. And, um, and it, I mean, if you, you can get the picture on Google of uh, Dali's version, but it looks like, you know... <laughs> Uh, the a soul is like escargot and with the uh, little fork, okay. you know. <laughs> yeah, but I I, 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 and, have in, uh, um, I have it on the screen right now, so the audience oh, you have it on the screen. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, well, if that was the account, but what's interesting for us is that initially he couldn't get in, and then they found a way to get him in, probably because they hadn't, you know, quite you know, rehearse the, the fake yet. But, uh, so yeah, from the very beginning, it was very shady and, um, you know, they manipulated the pictures significantly from that 1967 interview. Um, they turned the face and the shadowings all off and, um, you know, that 1967 meeting. So all that's wrong. Uh, there are some pictures, very few, uh, from that 1967 event in which you see Sister Lucy at a distance, the fake Sister Lucy at a distance, but the close-ups, from what I remember, are all, with Paul the VI, they're all faked. Yeah. They're all... Uh, cut and paste jobs and um so um that's the case i mean then well sometimes they have a picture of sister lucy close up and we have those but the the, the when they're together um they're mostly all faked except for the long distance shots so but it's worth checking out on our website anyways yes so Yes, I, I also had uh, these uh, edited edited photos uh, on the screen right now. Uh, okay, great, good. I'm going to look soon. <laughs> okay. So, but, uh, uh, on uh, speaking of uh, speaking of which, uh, on your personal website, uh, which is by the way, uh, Rat Trap Thomas, uh, you also showed how the fake sister Lucy uh, in her public interviews. Uh, in 1992, constantly spread the Vatican II doctrines and held pretty much contradictory claims, if not lies, about what we previously knew about the Fatima message. Uh, so, Sure. Absolutely. For example, um, 
you know, after having the vision of hell, she says that God doesn't condemn anybody, mm, for yes. example. Uh, Russia, the conversion of Russia doesn't mean conversion to the Catholic faith. It means basically establishing a religious liberty regime. Um, you know, and then you go on and on. She even uh, focuses on um, the consecration. She speaks, she says that uh, for many in the consecration is not meant to imply that there are some who are not justified and not saved um that it's meant to speak about the many are the jews and uh and christ is the one who uh had to be sacrificed for the people uh so it's so many strange things that she talks about um in her book calls for example uh she says that she has this whole explanation of the last vision uh, that she received on October 13th, 1917 of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And yet in her commentary, which stretches for at least almost two chapters, not once does she mention anything about wearing the brown scapular <laughs> in a generic kind of way. Yeah, the, and, uh, this really no, it's really absurd. It's absurd. It's absurd, yeah. it's absurd. And they've tried to, because, but see, now modern technology has allowed us to see the absurdity of it. When before, I mean, who knew? I mean, you're looking at books and you're looking at, it wasn't so easy to tell. Yes, indeed, indeed. And, uh, uh, and by the way, um, because now, um, we can consider that uh, we have now not only testimonial but and historical but also and that is the most important definite scientific certainty that uh, yes that we uh, have mathematical certainty yes. we have mathematical certainty everyone who sees it says i mean we've presented our pictures and our evidence to a, our pictures first of all to 11 private detectives and they said every single one catholic and non-catholic said this is obviously not the same person mm. so and when we presented to these experts like these forensic artists these super facial recognizers which is a whole new uh art you know scientific form of recognition they all say, no, absolutely not. Uh, they act like, it, in some way, it's so obvious. And they just have to point out how obvious it is mm. based on their own expertise. Um, you know, uh, uh, so the evidence is there. The case is there. If e Listen, if even, you know, Hollywood network people are recognizing and becoming excited about this story. Wow. Why Why the silence on the part yes. of traditionalists, so, you know, traditionalists, why the silence? Yes, Especially those, it, that's what irritates me the most. I mean, just even if you don't want to participate in the investigation, you know, throw us some, you know, support or some i mean compliment or i, I don't know even yes, a, even storyline somewhere but make this is real this is yes, a problem and, um, i i would like to ask you about that uh, professor uh, how do you sure. how do you explain the the surprising silence policy in some uh, of these uh, so called traditional catholic associations that well, held uh, um, quite a monopoly on Fatima since the 80s now. Uh, sure. I, I'm going to be blunt because the time is meant for bluntness. Um, money. Hmm. Uh, money. Because they don't want to upset those who are too attached to the Novus Ordo establishment. Hmm. And... Um, and they don't want their apple cart, which has gone along nicely for decades, to be overturned, which it would be if 
it became general knowledge that at least probably from 1959, you had to totally substitute Lucy and uh, everything that the imposter came out with cannot be attributed to the real Sister Lucy. They don't want this to be true. Yeah. So they're ignoring it. And uh, they think because they can ignore me, they can ignore the facts. But the facts speak for themselves. And I'm going to let the facts speak for themselves. And the investigator speaks for himself. And uh, these scientists and these doctors and these facial recognition people speak for themselves. And uh, then they won't be able to avoid it, hopefully. Mm, yes, hopefully, yes. Yes, indeed. No, uh, I, I mean, Sister Lucy is uh, one of the three, and she is actually the main seer of Fatima. Sure, which, she's the main seer. Yeah, which which is one uh, one of the most uh, greatest uh, one of the greatest uh, miracles that uh, humanity witnessed uh, since sure. uh, since the resurrection. So, I mean, and, how can and we... she asked she asked Our Lady for a miracle so that people would believe what. That it wasn't just some kind of nonsense. She, Lucia knew the message was so important that there would have to be a miracle in order for people to believe. Because otherwise, just children speaking. And based on this request, Our Lady said there would be a miracle. In date, she told them exactly the time, exactly the date, exactly the place. Yes. And guess what? <laughs> there was. And this is the woman we're speaking about. And this is not, I mean, not just this, but she, our Lord appeared to her and said, you know, why have it hasn't anything been done with, uh, with my, uh, my mother's requests and uh, our lady appeared they, She had a vision, a theophany, a vision of the Trinity uh, and of the graces coming from the mass, from the Trinity. Um, I mean, she spoke on intimate terms with Jesus Christ himself and Our Lady. And um, and it doesn't matter that she's gone? Yeah. Wow, yes, indeed. It so, does matter. It does matter, indeed, yes. Wow, so um, this was absolutely uh, amazing uh, and very interesting and we've been streaming for about an hour now. Um, so, oh, wow. first of all... <laughs> time flies. It's time flies, yeah, indeed. It's, um, it's, yeah. So, once again, I, I recommend to everyone in the audience to go and take a look at uh, sisterlucyimposter.org and discover the amazing work of Dr. Peter Wojnowski, uh, Sister Lucy's Truth Project. And by the way, Professor, uh, what are your uh, future plans for Sister Lucy's Truth um, regarding especially, I don't know, I, I don't want you to, to, to tell too much, but especially about this uh, maybe uh, interest from uh, Yes, uh, corporate TV, uh, media, and, and, yeah. and so on. There's a major network interested in uh, doing something. Um, I just talked to the investigator a few days ago, and uh, hopefully we'll be hearing something definitive uh, in the, by the beginning of June. Uh, they they want to finish the whole thing off in a, two months. They want to do the whole presentation in two months to get it out before the Fatima movie, which comes out August 14th. Wow. So <laughs> whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. But, uh, you know, if whether it comes out then or not, as long as I know it's coming out and that it's in production, I'll be happy. But uh, I don't know. When it gets to that level... I don't have, you know, I have to go through intermediaries to find out what's going on because sure. we don't talk to me directly. Yes, sure. So, um, but they know about it. They know about it. I, I know that. They know about the website that you're sending your uh, your viewers to. They know all about that. 
and they've looked at it, they've downloaded it, they've gone through it. So the truth about Sister Lucy is known at that level. And, you know, I was told by the investigator who's dealing with this that they're really hot to get a, get the story out. That's his word. So wow. hopefully good things come very soon, and I'll let you know. Uh, sure. I'll make it public how things are going. Okay, we will be um, looking uh, into that re really uh, closely, and we will. Good, also, great, thank we will, you. And we will also pray for the success of. Uh, thank you. Of that. Absolutely, it's amazing how God arranges things and how much spiritual support we have throughout the world. I thank everyone for that. It's really overwhelming, and it's sort of heartening in these times when it becomes difficult and. When you're just trying to piece things together, it's very heartening to have that spiritual support. Indeed, yes. All right, so, um, Professor, thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you again for your presence with us thank tonight. Thank you for having. <laughs> uh, all, all the pleasure, all the pleasure was mine, and um, I wish you good luck for your upcoming thank plans. You. And uh, thank in, you. Uh, and once again, we will pray for for this uh, success and. Uh, Sure. Thanks so much. And, and uh, I thank your audience for listening. Okay. And uh, I hope we'll, we will be able to have you once again, maybe in the future on, on Fide TV. Sure. Absolutely. I should maybe when things explode. <laughs> yes, uh, I hope so. And, uh, and maybe to discuss uh, Catholic philosophy and politics. Uh, a topic. Sure. Absolutely. That's yes. supposed to be my business. And, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... Um, We share, we share yeah, this interest we, uh, really uh, dearly. Oh, great. I know. I've read that on your site. That's, uh, that's wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. So. Right. so we would be more than delighted to listen to you uh, once again in the future. Thank you so much. All right. So thank you once again, Professor. And, uh, oh, may, no problem. May God protect and, you. And, uh, yeah, just keep okay. me informed as to how things are going and... Um, And let me know if we you want to arrange something else. It was okay. really fun. Okay. Really, really good. Really well. Okay. So um, we'll be in touch uh, very soon. And may, okay. God, may God protect you, Professor. Thank you. And so this should be on your site soon. Uh, the, for now. The video will be available uh, just after we stop the stream. So maybe, okay. in, maybe in two hours you, you can see it once again. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. We'll talk soon. Okay, okay thanks. Professor. Goodbye, Professor. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so that is, that's it for today, folks. And um, I will now switch back to French. Uh, if you want to support us, don't forget to share, like, and comment. Uh, you can also support us via PayPal on your on our website, which is Fide Catholica, as you may have uh, noticed it uh, just here. Donations. Uh, okay, so donc maintenant on va revenir en français, les amis. Donc so goodbye to our English-speaking uh, fellows. Of course, if you understand French, uh, don't mind. You, you can stay with us, of course. Euh, donc maintenant je vais repasser en, en français, chers amis, pour les français qui sont encore sur le chat. Je vais voir déjà s'il y a encore des gens sur le chat, je ne sais pas du tout. Euh, alors, les amis, voyons voir un peu tout ça. Alors, je salue d'abord les personnes présentes dans le chat. Donc je vois qu'il y a beaucoup de francophones, donc je vois que finalement, euh, finalement vous avez réussi à vous débrouiller. Monsieur Mammouth, MD, Marc Boutelier, bonsoir à tous. Joseph Sodax, bonsoir à toi. Euh... Voilà, bon, il y a encore sûrement d'autres personnes que je ne vois pas ici. Bon, finalement, il n'y a pas tellement de, de questions. Alors, Monsieur MD pose quand même une question. Est-ce que tous les gens à Fatima pensent que c'est la vraie sœur Lucie euh, bah, je n'en ai, ai aucune idée. Je ne... bah, alors Fatima, bon, il y a quand même, c'est une, une localité qui a quand même beaucoup évolué depuis euh, le début du XXe siècle. 
Mais malheureusement, enfin, vous, vous avez pu voir un petit peu, euh, donc là je vais vous faire un petit peu le résumé peut-être de tout ce dont on a parlé dans l'émission, c'est quand même incroyable. Je veux dire, euh, une fois qu'on qu observe, qu'on compare un peu les photographies euh, de la vraie Sœur Lucie et de la fausse Sœur Lucie qui, qui est apparue euh, par la suite, bon, euh, c'est quand, euh, quand même assez flagrant. Enfin, c'est flagrant. On voit qu'ils ont cherché à trouver une, une espèce de un individu avec euh, une espèce de, voilà, de, de forme de visage assez similaire, mais à part ça, bon, c'est quand, euh, voilà, quand même assez, euh, assez évident. Alors je sais que, là, là, je vous renvoie évidemment à cet article hein, que vous avez sur Fide Catholica, où justement on parle un petit peu, on résume un petit peu tout, euh, tout, ce, que les, tout ce que le Peter, re, euh, tout ce que le docteur, pardon, je vais me remettre en français, tout ce que le docteur Roynowski a, a publié sur son site, ben on l'a un peu synthétisé sur Fide Catholica, donc, euh, et notamment des témoignages de la famille de la vraie sœur Lucie, qui justement, à partir de la, du milieu des années 60, ben en fait, n'avait, enfin même déjà au début des années 60, ils n'avaient plus accès directement à, à la sœur Lucie. À chaque fois qu'ils allaient la voir donc chez les carmélites, il ben y avait toujours un problème. Alors, soit c'était seulement derrière la grille, Bon, ça à la limite, ok. Mais euh, voilà, on ne pouvait pas lui parler. Il euh, y avait quelqu'un d'autre qui parlait à sa place, qui répondait à sa place. Voilà, c'était très bizarre. On, il ne voyait pas vraiment son visage, etc. Donc en fait, même auprès de la famille, il va voir justement euh, ben, à quelle date sont morts les, les parents de Sœur Lucie, euh, enfin ses parents, ses cousins, etc. Ben voilà, ce serait bien de voir un peu leur témoignage, mais... Après, la chose, c'est que, c'est comme le, comme le docteur Roynowski l'a dit, euh, maintenant, l'important, parce que l'essentiel le, hein, de, de cette étude scientifique a, a été fait maintenant, les preuves scientifiques sont là. Maintenant, ce qui reste, c'est à, à faire éclater un peu la chose. Euh, ce serait bien, effectivement, alors ce serait un, un sujet génial pour Hollywood, ou en tout cas pour euh, n'importe quel producteur. Hein. Euh, ce qui serait mieux, ce serait qu'on ait des, des maisons de production catholiques, hein, euh, ou même qu'on réalise nous-mêmes un documentaire. Alors, je sais que les, les finéistes, euh, les frères Diamond, là, ils avaient, eux, ils ont fait un, ils ont fait des bons documentaires sur Fatima. Ils ont fait notamment des bons documentaires sur la fausse sœur Lucie. Mais c'est des documentaires qui, euh, voilà, qui sont vite faits, qui font juste partie d'un plus gros documentaire et surtout qui ne montrent pas toutes les preuves scientifiques que le docteur Roynowski a, a réuni avec toute son équipe. Euh, voilà. Alors, bonsoir. Alors, euh, bonsoir à, à Henri. Je te salue. Euh, bonsoir Monsieur Mammouth, alors je vous ai tous déjà vu. Bonsoir Brianna Jane, euh, bonsoir à vous. Alors la question c'est... Bonsoir et vous tous, merci pour... Que lui est-il arrivé bah, Pour résumer, bon, c'est ce que je viens de dire un petit peu, euh, je pense que vous avez entendu Brianna. Euh... Bah, ce qui lui est arrivé, ben, c'est manifestement, alors comme le disait le, le docteur euh, Roynowski, manifestement entre... Euh, octobre 1958, c'est-à-dire la mort du pape Pie XII, et euh, quelque part entre fin 59, début 1960, eh bien, euh, la sœur Lucie, sœur Lucie a disparu. Soit elle, a, soit elle est morte de façon naturelle, et donc euh, les, 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 les sectaires de la secte Vatican II l'ont remplacée, soit elle a été kidnappée, elle a disparu, enfin on l'a on on peut-être enfermée quelque part, ou soit on l'a carrément assassinée. Euh, en tout cas, euh, ce n'est clairement pas la même personne, euh, encore une fois, c'est clairement pas la même personne qui, qui apparaît en, en 1969, en 67, pardon. C'est pas du tout la même personne. Donc, il euh, y a quelque chose de très étrange qui, qui s'est passé là-dessus. Évidemment, là, je peux pas tout vous, vous rapporter, enfin, vous, je peux pas résumer tout ce qu'on a dit dans l'émission en, en français ici, mais euh, encore une fois, je vous invite à aller faire un tour non seulement sur le site de Sister Lucy Struth, euh, mais également sur Fide Catholica, si vous voulez avoir juste un résumé, euh, avec quelques preuves. Et vous voyez, c'est ce que je disais tout à l'heure au docteur, ils sont allés jusqu'à monter des, des, des fausses, enfin faire des, des montages photos en gros. Euh, donc ça, ce sont les premières photos qu'on a de la, de la fausse Sœur Lucie. Ça, c'est vraiment les toutes premières photos. Et elles sont parues dans, une, bah, dans cette édition hein, de... Alors, je ne sais pas exactement... Ce que c'est, alors c'est le magazine Stella qui était, édité, qui était édité par la congrégation des frères réparateurs de Notre-Dame de Fatima. Et euh, bah en fait, les études des experts justement de, de l'équipe hein, du, du docteur Roynowski ont montré qu'en fait, c'était tous des photomontages. Et en fait, on le voit puisqu'ils ont retrouvé les photos originales. 
Genre là, en fait, vous voyez un Sir Lucie avec Paul VI, alors qu'en fait, c'est juste une image de Paul VI qui, qui était passée à la télé avant, quoi. Euh, alors oui, Brianna Jane, je suis tout à fait d'accord, pour moi, Mel Gibson devrait reprendre ce genre de sujet. Euh, ou au moins, je sais pas, financer, euh, financer, euh, réunir une équipe de, de, de cinéastes pour le, le faire, quoi. Marc Boutelier nous dit, même le CD vacantiste local et du monde lusitophone, Monsieur Arai Daniel, euh, que j'ai connu, ne croyait absolument pas à la thèse du remplacement. Bon. Bah, ça, c'est son problème. Tout le monde n'est pas obligé d'y croire. Hein. C'est pas un sujet de, c'est pas une vérité de foi ou quoi que ce soit. Mais c'est juste maintenant, c'est devenu une évidence scientifique. Avant, c'était euh, des suppositions sur des photos, etc. Maintenant, ce sont des évidences scientifiques. Je veux dire, là, on a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 domaines d'expertise avec de nombreux, euh, de nombreux euh, tests, enfin, de, de nombreuses procédures scientifiques qui ont été menées par des experts reconnus dans leur milieu, par des universitaires, par des gens qui ont, qui ont gagné des, euh, des, des, des prix, euh, comment dire, du, du Guinness Book, euh, des, des, des policiers, enfin des détectives privés qui, qui sont dans leur métier depuis 30 ans, euh, ce sont des preuves scientifiques. Je veux dire, là, il n'y a plus de questions à se poser. Euh, avant, c'était des suppositions, certes, maintenant, ce sont des évidences scientifiques. Euh, et il y en a encore d'autres qui arrivent. Voilà. Euh, Marc Boutelier. Alors, me dit Guillaume, remontez mon fil, s'il vous plaît, ce n'est que mon témoignage, mais au moins j'étais sur place, contrairement au Diamond. Alors, euh, sur place où euh, Veuillez préciser, monsieur Boutelier. Hum, Grulix, salut Mecton, euh, nous dit le remplacement me paraît évident. Bah ouais, c'est clair que c'est évident, quoi. Bethel Milicia, que je salue, nous dit « Les hérétiques du Benedict Center en France ont fait une excellente vidéo dessus. Euh, » Alors, euh, je ne sais pas si le Benedict Center est en... existe en France, ils sont aux états unis mais attention, le Benedict Center, ce sont les finéistes qui sont en union avec euh, la secte Novus Ordo. Par contre, c'est vrai que le MHFM, enfin les, euh, les finéistes euh, des frères Diamond et compagnie, voilà, eux, ils ont fait quand même, il faut le dire, une bonne vidéo euh, sur Fatima, pas trop mal, on va dire, hein, après... Euh, tout n'est pas forcément... Euh, enfin, on peut pas être d'accord avec tout, en tout cas sur cette vidéo, mais factuellement, elle est bonne, et c'est précisément le genre de vidéo que qu'on devrait faire, justement, pour présenter un petit peu le, euh, le cas de, de Sœur Lucie, avec toutes les toutes les enquêtes, justement, du docteur Roynowski. Alors, Marc Boutelier nous dit, les gens de la famille m'ont indiqué qu'ils pouvaient la visiter et lui parler. Alors ça aussi, ce serait peut-être un, une chose à creuser. Moi, je suis pas spécialiste de la chose, hein, mais bon, si vous le dites, euh, ben, j'ai pas de raison de de, de de pas vous croire de ce que vous me dites. Mais moi, d'après ce que je sais, euh, les témoignages de la famille que j'avais lus jusque-là, c'était plutôt qu'ils ne pouvaient pas euh, librement y acc accéder à Sœur Lucie. En tout cas, en tout cas, je dis bien dans les années euh, dans les années 60, 70. Peut-être qu'après, ça a changé, et peut-être que alors après, je veux dire. Les parents de la vraie sœur Lucie n'aidaient plus en vie, je veux dire, dans les années euh, 80, euh, même 70, je crois. Donc, euh, euh, qui les, les visitait Peut-être c'était ses sœurs ou ses cousins ou autres. Bon, euh, c'est possible qu'après ne pas avoir vu sœur Lucie pendant 20, enfin pendant 10, 15 ans, enfin la, la fausse sœur Lucie, ils l'ont pas vue pendant 10, 15 ans, bah, peut-être que en fait finalement ils, euh, voilà, ils voient juste une personne âgée et ils la reconnaissent, enfin ils pensent voir leur, leur sœur, je sais pas. Hein, bon, je, je, je dis ça comme ça. Alors, euh, MD nous dit, c'est les officiels Vatican II qui ont fait ces montages. Alors, c'est pas, alors on ne sait pas exactement qui c'est, mais en tout cas, c'est le, c'est le magazine Stella, donc qui est, qui était tenu par euh, la congrégation donc des frères euh, réparateurs de Notre-Dame de Fatima. Alors, eux, par contre, euh, à la base, c'était une congrégation qui a été fondée en 1949 par le père Manuel euh, Formigao, qui était, qui était vraiment un, un fatimiste tout à fait catholique, tout à fait normal. Hein. Euh, par contre. Elle a, cette congrégation a été totalement mise sous contrôle de la secte moderniste après la mort donc du père Formigao en 1958 et notamment après le Concile Vatican II. Donc euh, voilà, est-ce que euh, bah forcément c'était des conciliaires qui, qui avaient la main sur ce sur ce journal quoi Donc euh, allez savoir. 
Marc Boutelier nous dit « À Fatima, j'ai passé les trois dernières années, il faut faire attention à ne pas passer pour des dingues, le cas de sœur Lucie peut très bien s'expliquer sans thèse du remplacement. Euh, » Ça peut être une, une apostasie, peut-être qu'elle est devenue apostate, mais euh, là encore une fois, moi je préfère croire les, les, les preuves scientifiques. Je veux dire, euh, à un moment donné, justement, euh, c'est pas une question de passer pour des dingues ou pas. Là on a, des, là, on a vraiment des, de la matière. Euh, des experts, des, des vrais scientifiques qui ont enquêté dessus, euh, bon. Donc c'est, c'est aussi simple que ça, parce qu'avant, c'est vrai qu'avant, c'était compliqué, je veux dire, avant, on pouvait pas, euh, on pouvait dire oui, on a des doutes, euh, effectivement, mais là, euh, c'est plus de l'ordre du doute, là, c'est de l'ordre de la certitude. En tout cas, c'est notre point de vue, en tout cas, c'est le point de vue que nous, on adopte chez Fidé Catholica, hein. moi, je, ça fait longtemps que je connais cette affaire de, de la sœur Lucie, euh, ça fait depuis le début que je suis, justement, le l'enquête du docteur Ronyevski. Euh, voilà, donc euh, après, libre à chacun, évidemment, d'y croire ou de ne pas y croire. Ça, c'est une autre question. Euh, elle, alors, Marc Boutelier nous dit, elle peut simplement avoir pensé que les usurpateurs étaient papes et leur avoir obéi sincèrement. Mais bien sûr, ça aurait tout à fait euh, été possible, hein, je veux dire. Prenons un autre exemple, le, le père, alors, le Padre Pio. Padre Pio, bon, il n'était pas vraiment euh, d'accord hein, avec, les, avec les, la révolution moderniste, mais il était très opposé à ça. Euh, ça ne l'a pas empêché de, de, de ne pas forcément avoir compris exactement les implications euh, théologiques hein, du fait d'avoir des euh, d'avoir ces, ces Paul VI. Alors lui, il a vécu jusqu'à l'époque de Paul VI, donc euh, Padre Pio ne voilà, pouvait pas savoir exactement, enfin ne pouvait pas avoir, être, avoir la certitude que Paul VI était un antipape. Mais, euh, mais néanmoins, c'est, le Padre Pio était quand même euh, très critique face à tout ce qui se passait à l'époque. Là, on a affaire à quelque chose de différent. Là, on a affaire à clairement deux personnes qui ne sont pas les mêmes. Très clairement, je veux dire, c'est, ça se voit à l'œil nu. On a les preuves euh, scientifiques maintenant. Et même pour conforter ce doute positif qu'on peut avoir, eh ben, on le confirme positivement par des évidences... Euh, de témoignage, quand on lit la, la, la fausse sœur Lucie, bon, on voit qu'elle est complètement ralliée euh, à toute la, do- à toute la, la doxa euh, Vatican II. Quoi. Je veux dire, euh, on n'a même pas parlé d'ailleurs du faux secret, là, de, de, du faux troisième secret qui a été sorti par euh, Ratzinger, euh, en, c'était en 2000 je crois, enfin au début des années 2000. On n'en a pas parlé, mais je veux dire, voilà, elle a été aussi euh, à fond là-dedans. Bref, vous n'êtes pas obligé d'y croire, euh, Marc, euh, à, tout ce, à, à tout ce qu'on amène comme preuve, etc. Vous n'êtes pas du tout obligé d'y croire. Bon, En tout cas, euh, je pense que maintenant, on a quand même de la matière, euh, justement, pour, euh, pour soutenir tout ça. D'ailleurs, si vous avez euh, suivi le, l'émission, le docteur Ronowski disait bien que au, au début de, au début de, son, de ses premiers doutes, hein, donc ça, ça remonte au début des années 2000, et même avant d'ailleurs, parce que le docteur Runowski, en fait, est vraiment euh, un dévot de Fatima depuis très longtemps, et bien, il a dit que dès le début, en fait, donc, il avait des doutes, mais euh, finalement, euh, alors il avait une, une amie, justement, dans ce mouvement fatimiste, qui lui disait, ben, on, ok, on a des preuves de témoignages et tout, enfin, on, a des, on peut avoir des doutes, mais il faut le prouver maintenant. Et c'est de là qu'il a commencé, justement, à, à mener cette euh, passionnante enquête, et il a, il a dépensé beaucoup d'argent pour ça. Monsieur Mammouth nous dit, franchement, je découvre le sujet, mais on voit que c'est pas la même. Bon, bah oui, on voit, clairement, c'est pas la même, effectivement. C'est clairement pas la même personne. Et encore, là, je, je n'ai pas euh, publié toutes les photos hein, sur Fidé Catholica, euh, mais bon, je veux dire, euh, regardez, re- ne serait-ce que la forme du visage ici. Euh, est-ce que je peux mettre un zoom quelque part Je veux dire, là, c'est... Là, tu, là, vous voyez, ce sont juste des, 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 comment dire, des choses qu'on voit instinctivement, tu vois, parce qu'on n'est pas des bêtes, on, est, on, on peut quand même réfléchir et se dire effectivement, là, on a affaire à deux silhouettes différentes, on a, c'est clair. Maintenant, on a les preuves scientifiques, les, des scientifiques de toutes sortes, des gens d'ailleurs qui ne sont pas catholiques, des gens qui n'avaient aucune idée de ce que c'était Fatima ou quoi que ce soit. Hein. Je, le, la plupart des scientifiques que le docteur Renowski a, a, a engagés, ce sont des gens qui ne sont pas catholiques, qui ne connaissent pas du tout Fatima. Il leur a juste dit, voilà, examinez ces pièces, examinez euh, les, le matériel que je vous donne, et, et dites-moi, avec vos appareils, avec vos, vos, vos outils euh, technologiques, bah, est-ce que c'est la même personne Donc, voilà, confirmation, quoi. Euh...
voilà. Bon, alors, euh, bon, il n'y a plus grand, grand monde sur le chat. Encore une fois, euh, cette émission était vraiment euh, pour faire découvrir justement le travail du docteur Roynowski, euh, travail très important. Parce que que vous y croyez ou pas, c'est une question très importante. En tout cas, tous les dévots de Fatima, euh, pour tous ceux qui ont la, la foi en, en Notre-Dame de Fatima, c'est une question très importante. Euh, donc voilà, l'objectif c'était vraiment de le faire découvrir, notamment au public francophone, euh, ces choses faites. Et euh, voilà, alors est-ce qu'il y a encore des commentaires Euh, ok, bon, il n'y a plus grand monde qui commente, alors je ne sais pas si vous avez encore des questions, ça peut être aussi pour autre chose, alors, euh, les prochaines émissions euh, n'auront sans doute pas lieu la semaine prochaine, mais en tout cas, voilà, les prochaines émissions sont, sont programmées euh, avec du beau monde et sur des bons su des sujets très intéressants, on va notamment parler de doctrine politique dans les prochaines émissions. Euh, voilà, entre autres, euh, bon, je n'ai pas vraiment d'autres communications à vous faire ce soir. En tout cas, je vous remercie à tous d'avoir été présents. Euh, et en tout cas, bah, je vous souhaite une excellente soirée euh, en cette semaine de la fête de l'Ascension. De, de euh, voilà. Bon, J'arrête le chat maintenant, les amis. Bah, écoutez, Je vous souhaite vraiment une euh, bah, très, bon, très bonne fin de soirée, un très bon dimanche. Et puis on se retrouve très très vite sur, euh, sur Fidé Catholica et sur Fidé TV bien entendu. Au revoir à tous. Salut.